What's up ladies and gentlemen, it's Scythe, that's Anne Tigron, and today I figured, hey, why not make a special little video, there's something that I haven't talked about, but I've been wanting to for quite some time, is my Elgato Game Capture HD, or Capture Card. For short. Now, essentially what this does, if you do not know, uh, although I'm sure anyone that actually is watching this video knows, that it's so that you can record consoles on your computer. Now, I'm going to show it right here. Here's the Elgato Capture Card. This tiny little compact, sweet little awesome box. I'm not going to pull it out of here, and I'm sorry, I know it's black on black because my computer case is black. But this is it. That's essentially it. Uh, I'm not going to pull it out of there just because it would be way too tedious for me. Now, this over here, this is the input side. Uh, this is actually an HDMI from my Black 360, which I had the white one, but it didn't actually have HDMI, so I had to go and buy this sweet little black one in a pawn shop, which, yeah, it was cheap enough. Uh, and then over here, we got the audio video in. Now, this is something to remember that comes with your Elgato game capture. Uh, right here, I actually have the Wii plugged into it, so it actually takes component cables. However, there is some lag between, and I will talk about this uh, a little bit further on in the video, but there's actually lag between uh, using component cables because on the output side here, even though it's component, it's coming out to an HDMI, which actually goes straight up to the TV. And then this other port right here is just the USB, which plugs right into the computer there. So besides that, I mean, very easy, very quick, uh, especially compared to some of the other capture cards out there, like that is so slick, like straight up. Now, right here, here is the software that comes with it. This is the Game Capture HD program, and I know I'm doing it through a camera, so it's a little bit cheap, but hey, whatever, you're just, sorry everybody, <laughs> this is just how it is. Now right here, th this main screen right here, I don't need to use the mouse, that's right, is actually tied to the what you're seeing on the screen right here now if I move the screen over live you're actually going to see right there is the delay between the Elgato and the live actual like what you're actually doing on the console now as far as uh, as far as that quote unquote lag is concerned you don't want to concern yourself with that you don't want to worry about that at all because the Elgato is still capturing it even if it's delayed it just means that you know don't look at this while you're trying to record, otherwise it's just not going to work, okay? Uh, a couple other things that I would say too is if you go into the settings here, come on a camera adjust, here's all your settings, which I know is kind of, this is actually horrible, so I'm kind of I'm kind of just explaining bits and pieces about the Elgato and how awesome it is, rather than actually trying to give like some kind of tutorial of how you should set it all up and everything. But anyway, we got a nifty little slider here, which is actually the video quality from good, better to best, and I have it on 720p. You can go up to 1080, of course, uh, but my computer can't handle it. This program's actually really smart where it's like if you crank it up too much or go into 1080p and try to put it on max, it will actually tell you that hey, your computer can't handle this. So it's actually really, really, really cool. Um, you can go into the picture and adjust the contrast, saturation, brightness and stuff. I just have my brightness up a little bit, but I still find that I have to brighten up my videos and editing. Anyway, uh, you can set up profile, audio, advanced, which that really never comes into play unless you're having like uh, connection issues. Now, I'm going to try and explain this here with the input. You can't really see it, but that actually is HDMI and you would swap that to component and switch the console to other if you were going to record the Wii or I think you can record PlayStation 1, I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, I don't know. But either way, now, uh, right over here you got the game audio, which uh, when you are actually recording, you know what, I should probably get a game running. Let me see here. Whoa, this TV's gonna be way too loud. Let me turn that down, sorry. I didn't, I didn't count on that. I don't, I don't know who had it on max. Uh, but anyway, you'll see right here as soon as we get some noise on our damn screen. See that? See the bars? That's actually the game playing right now. Uh, right over here, I just want to mention, just right in this corner, you can actually unmute and mute the audio. So let me see here. Come on. Well, anyway, I'm cranking up my computer speakers because you would be able to hear what's actually coming out of the uh, game capture software. So one of the things that you want to do while you're recording bloop, is mute that 
right away because otherwise you're just going to be hearing it you know coming back at yourself especially if you're using live commentary you'll actually start hearing yourself echoing out of because of the delay right now what i essentially like doing with this is the game audio um it, i i have it at about halfway uh i think it's at what is that minus yeah minus 9 db is what i usually put it at uh, it's a good enough volume where my commentating can actually go over top the gameplay uh, but you know use whatever you would like of course you just gotta figure it all out it took me a long time to figure all this out now if you are going to use the live commentary um because as it stands right now like live commentary means that you won't have any room for editing so you can't boost your volume if you're louder if you're too quiet over the game or etc and stuff like that but I will point out that there is actually a update coming to the Elgato right now it's only in beta which I would not recommend you download because it's a beta and it's I tried it it's extremely unstable um, but they're actually going to add the feature the Bandicam feature which is what I call it because that's that's one of the biggest reasons I use Bandicam as a recording software where <clears throat> Oh, pardon me, where the game audio and live commentary are actually going to export into two separate audio tracks. So what this means is if you're like me and you like to edit your videos and stuff, it means that you can, you know, bring the game volume up and just mute your audio track rather than hearing like hissing in the background. Or just in general, it's like if you don't got proper settings for your audio, then, you know, may maybe you could adjust them after and stuff. It's actually a fantastic feature and I'm very glad that they have it. The next step that I would love to see in recording software is another option where you could save a separate video. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, pardon me. Sorry about that. A separate video where you could actually have your webcam recording live into here, but an overlay so you could still edit it and mess with it and stuff like that. I, that would be the next step that I would love to see in all recording software. Now, uh, as far as the live commentary goes, I just have it minus one dB because that's usually what I do in my editing and editing is just bring it down by one. Now, I will mention right here, I don't know if you'll be able to make it out with the camera, but there's automatically reduced game sound. Now, that sounds really good in practice, and you can actually adjust the threshold to how much that would be. Pretty much, uh, I, I did it for a little while in my earlier videos and stuff where it'll actually bring the game's volume down while you're talking. The only problem is it has a very hard time detecting when you're talking, especially if your volume fluctuates. So, if you're going to be whispering and stuff, you know, it might not even pick you up. Uh, not to mention it actually adds a lot of delay to your volume and stuff like that and just just to your audio in general I would never recommend to actually using that as a feature uh, It's okay, and I'm sure some people can get it working, but overall I just prefer the consistency of It just recording right now actually right here the live streaming. This is this this is sick Okay, this is this is something amazing right here this live streaming section. They got now Essentially what it is right now. I just have it on my twitch because if I'm on the YouTubes It actually gives me like it gives out certain settings and stuff that I wouldn't like to uh, Now right here is just selecting your profile or account or whatever you just would click the plus and then you just add the account and Elgato does the rest that's the thing that's absolutely awesome about it is Like you can just tell it. Here's my twitch account you log in or even here's my YouTube account and you log in and that's it. You don't have to go through like for anyone that doesn't know live streaming, you actually got to go through quite a few hoops to actually get it to run. It, but the Elgato makes it as easy as clicking this button and then it just you wait for it to sync up and you're live and that's it. Like straight up it's actually amazing. I I I am so satisfied with that like straight up. Uh you actually have right here is a status message which I haven't ever seen in stream so I'm not exactly sure what that's about. Maybe Twitch uses it more than YouTube. And then right here of course you can adjust your bit rate and stuff and that's uh, that's a whole other beast altogether that you got to try and figure out just because yeah that, that's something else now down here too is another convenience is actually the tag so you can set up your video title what game you're playing that i know only comes into play with twitch so maybe the status message does too and then the description and your tags on your video now if you find this interface a little too clunky you can always just click the i 
and then bam, you just got like, this is just, you can't really see it through the camera, but these are just text. So you can actually just copy and paste a text document and stuff like that into here, you know, so it's like, I actually have my default description and everything like that, where it's like, click here to subscribe and then the link and then all the other stuff that goes on underneath it and stuff, which by the way, I need to update because it's a little out of date. And then all your tags and stuff like that, just separated by commas. And it's actually amazing. Now, another thing, when we get further all the way down to the bottom here, this, if you're not live streaming, you just plop that and you'd be recording right then and there. That's just how it works. And then right here, this tiny little icon, sorry, Diablo, get out of there. You know what, Chibi Diablo, you can move. Right here, this little camera icon will actually take a screenshot. As soon as you click it, which I don't have a touch screen, I'm just acting like I do, but you click it and then there you go. Now, another thing that you can actually set up in the settings of the Elgato is, uh, what the hell do they call it? Um, well, I don't know what it's called, so I'm just going to say that it actually records, I think it's half an hour. It's either half an hour or 60 minutes of backlogged footage. So right now, while we've been sitting here and it hasn't been recording, we've been sitting here for 15 minutes, that's what it says, and we could actually navigate into the Elgato folder and grab this gameplay that is just sitting here idle. So that is just awesome, especially if you're like the type of person that actually makes montages and stuff and you just missed the piece of footage that you needed. Uh, I've only ever actually used it once, but it's still an extremely awesome feature where if you ever miss anything, so long as your Elgato is on, you can grab the gameplay. Uh, the live commentary might work with it. I've never actually used the live commentary outside of streaming, so I can't really say anything about it. And then when you go in here, you can actually pause the video. And if we go about halfway, that's us back on the 360 screen, right? So then you can just fast forward, which I wouldn't actually use any of those, so I don't know why. Uh, you can pause it, just press play, or you can click live, which is the last one, and that will be, of course, a live performance, right? Now, another thing that I do gotta mention is that this program actually does come with its own editing software, uh, which I never touch. I'm sure that it's not that bad. That's really weird, why is that Hitman? Oh, cause that's some leftover footage that I haven't deleted, okay, cool. But either way, man, like that that's just absolutely awesome. It's got all your videos right here and stuff. Nice little interface um, for the way that looks and stuff. And this is just a basic editor. So you can cut videos and splice them together and stuff like that. Nothing that you can't do with any other recording software. Or not recording software, like editing software. But I mean, I use Adobe, so I don't really care or need any of that. Uh, let me just double check if there was anything else. Oh, right here. Yeah, that's right. So of course you tell it the file path or whatever. Flashback recording, that's what it's called. Sorry about the blurriness of the camera, everybody. This is the only way that I could do this. Uh, but then you can also tell it, also, always convert newly recorded videos into right here I have mp4 original and then you can actually tell it like if you're the type that doesn't edit your videos and you just like to upload them right away you can actually check mark any of these right here which is like YouTube Facebook Twitter uh, your iPad or iPhone Apple TV stuff like that and it will actually upload them right as soon as you press like stop recording you know as far as I know anyway, I've never actually used any of that. Uh, then of course down here uh, at the bottom, you can't really see it. Damn this camera is just automatic updates and stuff, so you can turn that off too. But either way, I just want to say that this is a fantastic capture card, uh, especially for the price. It's about 180 um, but straight up, man, it has actually been one of the most stable pieces of hardware that I've ever bought in my life. Uh, I'm just so satisfied with it. I have nothing but good things to say about it. There is a couple issues that I've ran into, yes. Uh, like one of the biggest issues, which, that's right, thanks for reminding me, uh, is when you're recording with like the Wii or an older console that actually uses component or composite, is that is that right? One or the other, either way, the, the colored wires and stuff like that. Now those aren't HDMI. 
But the fact that the output on the Elgato is HDMI up to the TV, one big problem that I have is that whenever I'm recording like Wii games and stuff like that, there's actually, not exactly, but almost a second delay between the controls and what you're actually seeing on the screen. And that's just because it has to go through these wires and then go through wires it's not compatible with all the way up to the TV for the signal, as opposed to the 360, which is just using HDMI, output to HDMI, right into the TV. So, yeah. But anyway, this video is like 15 minutes. I guess that's already good enough. It, there's not really much else to say about it, other than if you're going for a capture card, I would say that investing in an Elgato is definitely worth it. Um, the another issue that I have ran into a couple times is sometimes you'll see like this video will start flickering and jaggies and stuff like that. Not to mention also I was actually running into an issue recently with streaming where the video would only get up to about 13 minutes and then it would pretty much just freeze. Uh, from what I can tell the way that I resolve this was actually, it's it's strange because I never had this issue before, but that was also because of the weird beta update and everything like that. But if you run into any jaggies or anything like that, just lower your video quality and that seems to have helped it out a lot. Also, another thing that you usually do is sometimes you just have to close this program and reopen it. Uh, and as far as streaming goes, if you ever run into an issue where your stream suddenly stops, then uh, the way that I resolved it was actually just lowering the quality again. So like the bit rate, because, but I mean that's just me because I have like this weird island internet and stuff like that, right? But either way, that's gonna be it everybody. I just wanted to do a quick little talk about the Elgato capture card, uh, you know, kind of clue anybody in who's actually like considering whether or not they want to buy it. Just because when I was getting it, I didn't really see anybody trying to talk about it too much in detail. Sorry that it's through this camera and that it doesn't actually adjust accordingly for the uh, monitor and stuff like that, but hey, that's just kind of how it goes, right? Either way, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day. Sayonara and stay epic, everybody.